Hi guys, uh, welcome to my channel Audio Video Me. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a PA system for bands, live events, corporate live events, uh, or, or uh, your birthday parties, or any other parties or any other application where you want to project some audio or uh, you want to project some uh, music to the audience. Uh, okay, let's start with the equipment required. You're going to need a mixer, an audio mixer or sound mixer. Uh, you will need uh, amplifier or amplifier, depends what you're doing. And uh, if you have a graphic equalizer, uh, if not, that's not an essential equipment because you can always use the parametric EQ on the mixer. Uh, Okay, uh, you're gonna need a microphone, dynamic or condenser, wireless or wired, whatever you have. Uh, and then obviously, if you're a band, you will need your keyboard and uh, your bass guitar and uh, your drums and other equipment. Uh, for this demonstration, I'll show you how to connect a keyboard, a microphone, uh, an iPod and also uh, a guitar uh, okay let's first start with the microphone uh, so uh, in my instance I'm using a Shure SM58S uh, this is a dynamic microphone and uh, I have connected uh, it to my mixer via balanced XLR uh, so start with uh, XLR cable connected to the microphone uh, while you're connecting anything to your mixer just make sure that the master output volume is uh, set to uh, zero or, or it's in its down position and also uh, the volume control of your amplifier or amplifiers is uh, is set to uh, zero as well uh, next uh, once you connect the XLR cable to the microphone then uh, connect it to any available uh, channel in uh, for this demonstration I have connected it to mic input channel 1 uh, if you are using a condenser microphone and it's not battery powered then you can always uh, switch on phantom power uh, in order to get audio out of that microphone uh, uh, try avoiding using phantom power for dynamic microphones if they are not balanced or you're not using balanced cables uh, okay so that's the basic, basic on the uh, microphone setup once you have connected your microphone then just first test it so raise the master output volume test one two one two uh, i'll show you in a minute uh, uh, how to connect the speakers uh, to the amplifier and uh, how to take the output feeds from the mixer uh, to the amplifier uh, okay Now, uh, for your uh, keyboard uh, or workstation, whatever you've got at home, uh, just take uh, two uh, line outputs, left and right, and then connect it to the mixer. Connect it to the mixer line input or if you have taken left and right line output of your keyboard or workstation then just connect it to the available stereo uh, uh, line left and right inputs uh, okay then for your guitar if you're using an electric guitar or bass guitar, it is recommended that you use a DI box 
uh, a DI box looks like this so basically you take a line output from the guitar which goes into line input uh, on the DI box and then an XLR output from DI box goes to mic XLR input on your mixer okay so let me demonstrate you that so this is uh, the guitar so if you're using a bass guitar or electric guitar just take a line output uh, from that guitar and then that goes into DI box line input and then uh, from DI, bo DI box XLR output to mixer uh, mic XLR input uh, so this guitar is connected to channel three I'm just gonna test it <laughs> you can directly uh, connect the guitar to line input uh, on your mixer uh, but it's not recommended as uh, the signal is not that clear uh, so use a di box if if you can afford one or if if one is available to you uh, di boxes they are not that expensive they're cheap uh, so just order one from Amazon or eBay there are two types uh, passive and active uh, just read about uh, passive and active DI boxes on internet uh, best sources Wikipedia or, or uh, just try to take the knowledge from different sources um, uh, the active uh, DI boxes also uh, provide the option to use uh, phantom power if that option is available on the active di boxes otherwise they are operated by a 9 volt battery or 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 uh, external power uh, okay uh, if you're playing back uh, any music or any tracks uh, then uh, just use a mp3 player or ipod and connect it to the stereo uh, phono input uh, on, on your mixer and uh, uh, in my case I have connected it to channel 13 so just gonna test that one more thing I want to mention how to differentiate between uh, uh, balanced uh, XLR cables and unbalanced uh, best thing is uh, if you are unsure whether you are using uh, balanced XLR cables or unbalanced just open the XLR cable and if there are three cables connected to the uh, pins then it's a balance uh, XLR cable one is positive one is negative and one is ground or it's hot cold and earth uh, so that's how you can quickly tell whether your XLR cable is balanced or not and uh, for for your TRS jacks uh, TRS connectors this is the balanced one uh, and this is the unbalanced one so unbalanced one has one black round and the balanced one has two so that's how you quickly differentiate between balanced and unbalanced uh, cables and connectors uh, the main reason of using uh, balance uh, XLR cables or balance uh, TRS cables is uh, that uh, in in the longer run uh, 
when when you are actually putting a lot of uh, electronic equipment and you run the uh, XLR cables between that electronic equipment it can pick up uh, electromagnetic interference uh, or radiation uh, so if it's a balanced uh, cable then that would reduce the noise uh, that is the main advantage of using uh, balance uh, cables uh, okay so now in next step uh, I'm gonna show you the back of the mixer and how to do the back uh, connections uh, so let me just move the camera a bit before I show you that uh, another thing I want to mention uh, almost all the mixers they have master output or left and right output uh, so connect two balanced uh, XLR cables to left and right output which then goes into your amplifier and this is just a basic setup I'm not uh, gonna demonstrate in this video how to use a graphic equalizer a compressor uh, a limiter uh, but I will make videos about individual videos about how to uh, connect a graphic equalizer uh, how to connect a crossover what is a crossover uh, what is a limiter what is a gate and how to connect it uh, with your setup um, I don't know if you can see it or not let me just try to okay so from the mixer left output right output goes into xlr channel input one and channel input two on your amplifier and then from your amplifier take a speak on output to your speakers uh, Next, I'm going to explain you how to match uh, your amplifier wattage with your speaker setup. Let me just adjust the camera. I'll show you my speakers. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to explain you exactly how you can. Uh, make sure that you got a uh, powerful enough amplifier for your uh, speakers uh, uh, the formula is really simple uh, if you're using uh, 8 ohms 300 watts uh, speakers then your amplifier should support uh, 8 ohms uh, resistance uh, per channel and uh, it should support minimum uh, around 500 watts I'll tell you why 500 watts for uh, 300 watt speakers um, it is recommended that if you're using uh, your amplifier to play back uh, music or vocals then multiply the wattage the uh, continuous wattage RMS uh, of your speakers by 1.6 so uh, in my case my speakers they are 300 watts so the amplification I'm gonna need for playing back vocals or normal music out of my speakers is let me just do the calculation 300 watts multiply by 1.6 so I'm gonna need 480 watts uh, 
per channel out of my uh, amplifier to run one of the speakers. Uh, so basically each channel on my amplifier should support minimum 480 watts uh, to run these speakers uh, properly for hours. Uh, if you're gonna play back any heavy metal kind of music or, or rock music at loud then multiply the wattage of your speakers by 2.5 uh, so in if i'm using 300 watts at 8 ohms uh, coming out of one uh, amplifier channel then i'll multiply it by 2.5 so i'll get 750 so my amplifier should support 750 watts per channel in order to accommodate heavy metal or rock music out of these speakers although they are 300 watts but that's the amplification power you need uh, okay uh, next is when you daisy chain these speakers or connect them in parallel mode then what wattage you need out of your amplifier channels and uh, a lot of people out there they're really confused about it and they really don't uh, take this in account they just connect their speakers uh, in, as daisy chain or in parallel mode and they don't consider the uh, wattage required uh, from the amplifier channel okay so if I daisy chain this speaker, this is 300 watts. With this speaker, which is again 300 watts, both are 8 ohms. So when I'm gonna connect them in parallel mode or in da daisy chain mode, then I'm gonna, uh, I am basically dropping the resistance of these speakers. The formula is if you add, if you daisy chain or par parallel. Uh, connect two speakers then divide the impedance or resistance of the speakers by two so if the resistance is eight ohms per speaker I'll divide it by two so that's four ohms now I need to make sure that my amplifier can accommodate at 4 ohms so what I'll do first is I'll check the manual of the amplifier if it supports uh, per channel 8 ohms uh, sorry 4 ohms if it does then I'm alright to connect these speakers in parallel uh, mode with my amplifier if my amplifier doesn't support uh, the lower resistance uh, the lower number resistance uh, like let's say 4 ohms or 2 ohms then I've, I cannot connect these speakers to my amplifier but uh, my amplifier it can support uh, 4 ohms uh, uh, per channel so I can daisy chain these speakers uh, okay what wattage I would need if I connect these speakers in parallel mode uh, from my amplifier channel uh, so this speaker is 300 watts this is 300 watts so again I will apply the same formula total speaker wattage RMS of these two speakers is 600 watts so uh, as a rule of thumb I'll use the formula if I'm gonna be outputting vocals and normal music out of it then I will multiply by 1.6 so 600 watts multiplied by 1.6 is 960 watts so I will require 960 watts per channel at 4 ohms from my amplifier to run these speakers for hours without any issue if I'm going to output heavy metal or any other kind of music out of these speakers that 
it's got loads of highs and loads of bass in it and uh, then I would need to multiply it by 2.5 so in that case I will multiply 600 watts multiply by 2.5 so I will need minimum 1500 watts uh, per channel at 4 ohms to run these two speakers in parallel mode uh, for hours without any issue now if you can't afford that kind of uh, amplification in your setup then that's fine don't run your speakers uh, for long uh, I just wanted to tell you this formula because a lot of people have asked me in the past like uh, or, or I have seen a lot of people doing it wrong so this is the formula you should always apply and if you can afford that kind of ampli amplification please do so that way you can run these speakers and your amplifier in the safest mode possible and you will not damage it or fry your speakers or your amplifier I mean these speakers they are about 10 11 years old uh, but they still sound so good uh, because uh, they were used with the proper uh, wattage required for proper application or uh, different applications uh, okay guys uh, in my next videos I'm gonna show you what is a graphics equalizer how to add a graphics equalizer in your setup and uh, uh, basically this is how a 31 channel graphics equalizer looks like uh, I'll, I'll uh, tell you guys in my next video how to ring out microphones uh, using a graphics equalizer uh, then in, a, in another video I'll explain you what is a crossover what is the function of crossover why we use active crossovers when we already have passive crossovers in our speakers uh, and then uh, I will make another video about uh, microphone preamps or I will just demonstrate it in uh, in my next videos uh, another thing I want to mention is uh, if you have a bass guitar or, or any other guitar where uh, you want to use uh, the guitar separately uh, with its own uh, uh, speaker and amplifier that's possible just take a mic uh, dynamic mic uh, or unidirectional uh, mic and place it uh, near that uh, speaker uh, same applies to the drums if, if you're playing drums and stuff then just take a unidirectional microphone and place it near your uh, drums uh, okay guys uh, I hope I have explained you a, in the simplest uh, possible way uh, but if you have any questions uh, regarding the mixer the different types of mixer or any other uh, inputs and outputs of the mixer because uh, this is just a, a quick uh, way of uh, demonstrating how to set up a PA system uh, but when you want to actually do it properly then you need to take a lot of stuff in consideration uh, to get uh, the uh, right result uh, so if you have any questions about the connections uh, or or the wattage required from your speakers uh, and from your amplifiers and how to match it and what is the resistance uh, impedance and uh, then please uh, either email me or uh, leave a comment and I'll get back to you uh, in, uh, at my earliest uh, okay, hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, see you guys on next video. Bye.